on guys, Aqua here back with another video. We're here today to give you my review of this new Favi mixtape, uh, Pain and Love. This is the third project for Favi in the 2020s decade, with him starting off with the very strong Bible, uh, giving us a quick SoundCloud mixtape with Without Warning that I thought was pretty solid. And now we have Pain and Love. Now, Favi's been in an interesting like point up to his like career at this point, because, you know, obviously he... Uh, was sort of second to pop for like a really long time uh, or not a really long time he was second to pop at first and then pop passed away and he was sort of expected to take up that mantle and while the bible was in my opinion a really great album uh, I don't think it quite had the mainstream sting that you know people were kind of hoping for from Favi uh, not in like 2022 or whatever and so he kind of took a step back reevaluated, and he was kind of in a weird place because like his style of music was this very like sort of by the books regular drill music where he just kind of goes and you know cooks and you know for a while i think it the logical conclusion for favi has sort of seemingly been to, you know to up his lyrics to improve his writing and something i even commented on you know if you look at early early favi stuff it's like really you know the punchlines are kind of airy they don't hit really at all on the Bible, we get better punchlines, but still not too much topical focus song to song. Um, but we do get more like general focus, whether it's like deep songs or love songs or hype songs. Uh, then I think he really hit his stride writing wise on Without Warning with multiple stories uh, throughout that and some solid bars, even on the more chill or even on the more hype tracks, uh, such as uh, uh, I think it's uh, the, the T Dot song. I can't remember what it's called, but. Yeah, uh, and now we have Pain for Love, and I think, like I said, Favi is in kind of an awkward space sonically because as Drill is evolving to be more dancey and fun, the more like deep, uh, uh, substantive Drill that he was sort of encroaching on is less desired. So going into Pain for Love, he's sort of in an awkward space because, because sonically he's not really able to give uh, the music industry, like the evolved form of like drill with the dance and all that stuff. Uh, nor is he like quite got the lyrical pen to stand out as a rapper's rapper. He's kind of in this awkward middle ground where he still makes great music and he still has got solid bars, but can't really put it all together into something uh, that is more widely appealing or captures a more general audience, uh, at least at the current moment. And so, you know, for Fabi, I think there was like two logical sort of options, uh, that being one to just fully commit to the trendy sounds or to just like, you know, work on the musical aspect of his uh, music or, or of his, of his, yeah, of his rap music or the uh, route that I think he seemingly went on, which is to just lean into the substance more, become a rapper that, you know, people care to hear from and have people really think about what you say. Uh, I am unfortunately sorry to report that like while I am very happy that this was the approach I don't think it fully panned out for a few different reasons, but uh, Let's get into it and let's actually start with the writing which I have to unfortunately still give a good now there are songs on here like who knew and the uh, leading single same 24 and no love that are beautiful topically focused tracks with stories and uh, explanations and uh, a deep acknowledgement of the things that Fabi has been through and how they've traumatized him. And this is the kind of rapping that I really would love, I love to hear from Fabi when it comes to those deeper songs. And I don't know if he's still like freestyling or writing, but at the very least, I can at least say that topically uh, he's become more focused and on these songs, uh, it's clear that he is improving. However, the sort of fun punchlines that we got from albums like The Bible or from stuff like Without Warning, uh, from songs like Magic City uh, or songs, like I said, uh, T. Dot Wu, are kind of gone. Like a lot of the more, I think this album really suffers because a lot of the more like fun-ish dancey tracks really fall flat both lyrically and sonically. You have songs like Get Daddy, where really it's 41 and that whole new collective that sort of takes over. And despite me not really enjoying 41's music all that much, 
they still have the strongest performance on this song with Fabi uh, rehashing some old punchlines that we've that are already iconic and the chorus not really being all that interesting uh, you have the song with Popcon uh, I don't think I said that wrong called the best which I think it's just a bad drill um, international like crossover. I don't think it works very well as a song. And again, Fabi's not really, there's no interesting punchlines for me. Uh, there's no like witty, like cool things or quotables that he said on there. Uh, Could Be Us is a decent song with honestly decent writing. Uh, and it was, it was like sort of par for the course. That was maybe like, some of the like cool punchlines I was hoping to see more throughout the album, uh, but uh, uh, and trauma from a writing perspective uh, was actually pretty good. Uh, pain pressure as well. Pain pressure and trauma as well were like very good like written tracks, um, and I think like though if 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 the track list was those kinds of songs plus like songs with better bars and punchlines, this could have easily been a great. But I think again songs like Get Daddy, songs like The Best. It, songs like Get Daddy, songs like Waiting, songs like The Best, really kind of hold this thing down from a, a writing perspective. And because it's short, you know, each song, you know, matters more as it's a larger percentage of the album. So while I think the writing is still good, and I really respect the attempt at deeper writing because he accomplished that on a decent amount of, like, songs here, like, the, 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 the more fun musical tracks don't quite hit as hard with those punchy bars that we got from earlier in Fabi's career. Next up is going to be the production, and this is the biggest hit for me. This has got to go with the good, and I was kind of expecting this, but it's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. So, with him sort of trying to engage more lyrically and, you know, get more substance out of his lyrics, he sort of stripped back the production a little bit. We have more piano beats on here. And while some of the beats like Same 24 and No Love are cool, uh, some of the production is like pretty samey, such as Who Knew uh, and uh, Pain and Pressure and Clutch. And overall, it feels like a lot more of a like laid back, sort of like, you know, the, 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 the Mr. Morale effect where because of, you know, like Kendrick Lamar was getting into such deep stuff, a lot of the production was maybe stripped back, not as an interesting and all that good stuff. But I feel like, you know, for this, uh, Favi took a similar approach where he like pulled back a lot on the production and it makes, like, I think with production being one of the most interesting aspects of Favi's music, him feeling like he pulled out, pulled back on a lot of the interesting drill beats, gave us a lot of like generic piano beats that TJ has been giving us. It really just didn't like hit for me all that much. There were still some cool beats, and there was no, no beats that were overtly bad besides the best, in my opinion. But overall, the production was not really boundary pushing. It wasn't really big or grand in any way. And it was just ordinary overall. So that's the production. Uh, features, uh, I was back and forth with this. I was going to give it a mid, but honestly, I actually got to give it a good. Because there are a lot of like really good features on here. Uh, I... Popcon was like maybe the worst one on here, but that was more just like sonically. It didn't like match up well together. Uh, but people like Sway Lee and 41 had pretty solid performances. And I really feel like 41 was able to shine on, on the record that they have. Again, I just wish it was attached to a like better song with a more interesting chorus. Uh, you have Vori and Meek Mill who went absolutely insane with their features. We need a like we need a Vori and Fabi tape because every single time them two come together, like I think No Love is like the best song on here, uh, either No Love or Same Twenty Four, uh, but like Vori went absolutely insane on his feature, providing an awesome chorus. Meek Mill providing his like reflexive aspects of you know what it was like giving to the game and helping out his homies. Uh, I reacted to that, but y'all know that that was like Meek Mill's feature on that was like super super strong. Uh, Roddy Rebel on Pain and Pressure was standard, solid, uh, stuck with the theme really, really well, and I really enjoyed it. Do I do I give these a great? There was a lot of like solid features on here. Uh, it was really good to hear from Chef G again, uh, and I really liked his chorus. Uh, I I definitely miss we did gang gang gang, but I, I you know free Chef G. I, I can't wait to see 
you know, a, a project where Chef G is operating at full form because it th this this was a really good. I liked his chorus as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was that was uh, that was the features. I might. I don't know. I think the only reason I feel weird about giving it a grade is because besides like maybe Meek Mill, there weren't any like overtly standout performances. A lot of the performances felt solid, fit the song decent, but it didn't feel like there was anyone who went absolutely bananas or anything like that. So I'm going to keep it at a good for now, but definitely subject to change. <clears throat> Next, the flows. And I'm still going to go ahead and give this a great. It's not an amazing like normally is because again, stripped back. So the rapping is also a bit slower on songs like Sam 24 and uh, and uh, what's it called? And Pain and Pressure. But there was this really interesting flow that he did on, what was that, Waiting? That was like super, super cool. And while I wish the bars were a little bit better, I really, really liked the flow that he implemented. I love to see Favi like experimenting with new flows and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the most, it's one of his most underrated aspects, but it's also one of his most innovative aspects is how he keeps changing his flows and tempos to find different pockets in the drill beat. That was really, really impressive. Other than that, it was like the standard cutoff flow that was super, super good. The ad-libs were flowing crazy as normal. But again, because this one felt a little bit more stripped back and there was a few slower, more like boring flows. Uh, and I think that uh, Fabi's still learning how to navigate those deeper records. Uh, I think that for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a great. Musical execution, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good. I felt like uh, overall, uh, because it was more stripped back and like writing, like, you know, there was an attempt at like deeper messaging. There wasn't as much like musically to take from it. And also this wasn't really like boundary pushing in any way. Like, you know, when I listen to an album, I want to feel like there's music on this album that I can't get anywhere else. And I didn't have that feeling necessarily with this album. And so for that reason, uh, along with the other stuff I mentioned with the flows being, you know, not as good as prior works, as well as the production being pretty lackluster, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a good, the product, like the musical execution is still fine. And I think for someone who was just experiencing this kind of music for the first time, they definitely have a lot of songs to take. But again, as someone who's listened to TJ, who's listened to Lil Durk and who's listened to Favi and Chef G. I just felt like there just wasn't that much for me to take on this album that felt like refreshing and new. So yeah, overall, uh, a bit of an underwhelming performance from Fabi, uh, and I'm hoping to see him pick it back up later. But uh, I really appreciate you know his efforts to become deeper as a writer, and I don't want it to be lost how uh, much improved his topical focus and ability to uh, get out an idea, which is something I feel like was lacking in uh, you know prior works. If we could just get an album where we have those tracks like Same 24, Who Knew, and No Love, and we can pair those with songs like Magic City <clears throat> and uh, Changed, on, was it Changed On Me, I think was like the really, really good one, uh, then you know maybe we might get an amazing or a classic project from Favi. But for now, yeah, these are my thoughts. Let me know what y'all thought of this in the comment section below. With that being said, peace, y'all.